and welcome back to my channel and to this flip through of the 2021 Box Clever Press Family Life Planner. So I've been really enjoying using the 2020 and I fill it with lots of stickers. Give you a quick flip there. I'm always using it. I use this for time blocking. So I time block my day into these different sections and then use a very visual representation of what I'm doing in each time block. Um, I realised that the uh, new ones came out last month, so they start from August 2020 and go through to December 2021. And so although I have a few months left in the 2020 planner, I thought I'll get a new one because why not get as most use out of it as I can. And um, I like to start the new year in September anyway. I very much work to the academic planner, whether it's because I've been at school, been at college, um, have a child at school myself and also working in a church we also work to the academic year so it's good to start planning for September start. So I'm going to flip through here so a new addition to this year's you get a free address and contacts book which they normally do um, which I love and then this year we've got a front pocket as well as a back pocket and the back pocket has the stickers in so this is the design for this year's stickers and you get two sheets of these and the design for last year's stickers are quite different so you can see the aesthetic is slightly different so that's quite nice but I've still got loads from last year as well so I'll still use those up but it's nice to have those options so we've got two handy pockets at the front and then other than the design change, so this was the design for last year, red on the outside, navy on the inside, and every single page carried through with that navy petals pattern. This year we've got these lovely tones, muted peach colour, greens, greys and navy colours in this watercolour pattern, which is foiled with silver on the front and on the back as well, which I'll show you a little later. And then each of the months is a different colour, which I'll get to in a little while, but picked up in this main design here. So the other difference that we have this year is we have two ribbon bookmarks as opposed to the clear acetate dashboards that clip in. But the great thing about having last year's and this year's is that I can still reuse these dashboards and so I will. So now I'll have two of the clear dashboards and two of the ribbon markers which gives me extra options when it comes to bookmarking my pages which is never a bad thing. Let's straighten that up. There we go. So the front page um, has a lot less information than last year's edition. So this had a lot of information, um, personal information that is. So this has just got the name and number. Same useful numbers page on the inside and then mini calendars for 2020 and 2021 at the front. And then right at the back, we have mini calendars for 2022 and 2023. So that really does give you brilliant options when it comes to forward planning. So then we have three weekly routines pages, which are really handy. I use these for each of the main terms that we have with the school year. So this will be the autumn and then the winter, spring and then the summer term. And then we get into some notes pages, thoughts and plans for 2020 and for 2021. Well, there's not much left of 2020 and my thoughts on how the year's gone so far. Well, I might find some sort of comedy spread to write there. And then we get into the monthly spreads. And what I really like about the way that they've done this planner is previously we had the weeklies in one section and then the monthly spreads in another section and it just meant that I didn't really use the monthly spreads very much at all because it was a lot of flipping back and forth to use them and I just don't find that very useful so instead I planned my monthly spreads um, in a google calendar and I didn't really do much creative planning monthly wise at all so this is brilliant because here we have the weekly spreads and then once we get towards the end of the month we have the September monthly planner and then we get into more of the weeklies. So 
that just means that everything's all together and it's so much easier to use what they have also done is each month rolls into the next so on the 27th of September we then have a next page which is the October monthly and then we get back into the weeklies starting on the 28th of September and obviously going into October there I really like that they've done it that way instead of um, giving you the same week twice um, a lot of planners will do that they'll put um, the last week in September in the September layouts and then they'll put the first week of October in the October layouts and you end up doubling up um, so when you don't have a Monday start of the month it's really useful to have that flow like that and I think you would start to plan your monthly planning for the next month towards the end of the last month anyway so it doesn't bother me too much that um, it means I've got a few extra days of September in the October spreads I have put these tabs in myself um, they are marked each month is marked with a tab but I do prefer to be able to actually find the month with ease and so I made these tabs and basically what I did was um, there are three main dashboards in this planner one for the budgeting and notes which I'll get to in a little bit and then another for the Christmas and holidays and then another for the shopping lists and so what I did was I scanned the image in from the back of each dashboard so that you've got as much of that design as possible. I shrunk it down and then made these little tabs. And what I've done is I've laminated them. They're on sticker paper so I can fold them over and they stick to the page. And they're laminated with clear book cover. Um, rather than putting them through a laminating machine because this way they're still quite flexible so they will bend with the planner with ease but they're still quite hard wearing as well um, I used a sharpie on them and I can already see that some of the sharpie is going to be rubbing off but that's fine I can go back in and cover those up at some stage and then what I have done this time I've changed the way that I'm time blocking my week so previously I had 6 to 9, 9 to 11 30, 11 30 to 1 and 1 to 3 so I've kept that the same and this time in the evenings I have 3 to 6, 6 to 7 30, 7 30 to 11 whereas I had 3 to 6, 6 to 8 30 and 8 30 to 11 and the main reason I've done that is because I kept straddling um, the evening stickers because most of the things that I do in an evening will start at half seven whether it's an evening meeting um, a function on a Friday or a Saturday most of those things start at half seven so it was just a lot easier to be able to change the way I was time blocking those pages and so what I've done is I've done the first two months here I've done September in the green to match the green and I've done October in a purple to match this purpley color um, this planner is a lot less neutral than last year's one so last year's one really did stick with um, the navy interior but it was quite light so if I go to these pages here and these pages here the weekend was actually quite a light navy colour whereas this year's book is quite dark when it comes to the navy colour and um, that's not as neutral as I would like um, I use a lot of different types of stickers. Some of them are kiss cut stickers, so they have no edging. Some of them I square off because I cut them myself, because I print them myself. Um, so it would be nice if the whole thing was white. I understand why they mark the weekend, but for people who don't really work Monday to Friday and have a separate weekend as such, it, it can be quite difficult to have that marked that way. And also because it is so dark. The way that I use them with the stickers it will be glaringly obvious that there's a difference but I can live with it because I love this planner for so many other reasons that I'm happy to stick with it. So we go all the way through as I said to December 2021 which feels like a lifetime away and then we have some thoughts and plans for 2022 that really does seem like a lifetime away and then we get into the budgeting and notes and I really like these spreads there's um, a double page for each month, budget and then income and outgoings. I would love to say that I'm going to use them. I didn't really use them in the last one. Um, it's normally the sort of thing that I start off really well and then it tails off and I'm not using them. But I'd like to try and stick to having everything as much as possible in this planner because I use my bullet journal now for meeting notes and to-do lists. Um, but I'd like to um, stick to planning in this. Um, and so... 
using the budget would be good and then we get to the end of that and there's some notes and to do pages then we have our next dashboard which is Christmas and holidays and we have Christmas plans note page a Christmas budget page Christmas cards Christmas presents Christmas shopping and then the summer holiday planner and I really did use this um, quite a bit this year although I still want to go back and put some more stickers in it to memory keep what I did on each day but because I had quite a lot of annual leave this year during the summer holidays it was really good for me to be able to mark out each of these with whether I was actually working whether I was off on annual leave or whether it was just one of my standard days off so I really like that having that layout there it's a nice addition I haven't seen it in many other planners it's sort of the sort of thing I'd probably have to draw in myself so um yes so yeah it's good to have and then one more notes page and then we get into the shopping lists now these are perforated and we have three to a page and I didn't really use these very much in my last planner I mainly tore them off and used them um, to create lists of stickers that I needed to print because I was running out or stickers that I wanted to buy because I just wanted them um, so hopefully I'll use them a little bit more because there's so many in there um, it's a little bit of a waste of paper it would be nice if maybe they could make these more of a generic note or to-do lists that I would probably use a little bit more if they had check boxes I guess I could draw check boxes on them myself but um, but yeah, not hugely useful for me, but maybe for others they would be. So then, as I mentioned earlier, we've got those mini calendars for 2022 and 2023, which seems crazy. And then this final notes page I have used as a pen test page. So we've got all of the um, the gel and fine liner pens I generally use, including one fountain pen and one biro, which is the Paper Mate Ink Joy. Um, there's quite a lot of bleed through with the Uniball pens and the um, the thicker, so the Pilot V-Ball and the Parker Fountain Pen. Um, the Korean gel pens that I get from um, the internet, <laughs> um, I buy online, they never come through and they hardly ghost at all. So they're probably the best. This was actually a pen I got from the works, which I refilled with the gel pen in it because I'm not a huge fan of biros, but for some reason in Britain, that's mainly what we sell. Whereas um, our friends in Korea and China and Japan all have these gorgeous gel pens and they work really well and they don't bleed through and they're really cheap. So I don't understand why we don't have more of them over here, but you can buy the inserts and so that's what I do. Um, so you can see there's some ghosting of um, the Zebra Sarasa, although that's another good one because it doesn't bleed. And then I've used a Mild Liner, a Paper Mate Flare and a Zebra Metallic. So the Mild Liner doesn't come through until that very end bit, which is where it's sort of the most juiciest bit at the end of the stroke. The Paper Mate Flare does bleed a little bit and there's a lot of ghosting. And the same with the Zebra Metallic, although I am still using them um, for birthdays. So I've put in some of the birthdays um, already and I'm matching a metallic pen to the colour each month. Um, and so that does bleed through a little bit. Where are we? It does ghost on that page a bit, but I don't mind because I'm bound to put a sticker over it. So I don't mind too much if there's a little bit of bleed through or a little bit of ghosting. So that is the 2021 Box Clever Press family life planner I hope you enjoyed that flip through if you would like to see a more extensive flip through of my 2020 planner please let me know in the comments um, I can show you all of the stickering that I've done so stickers that I've made stickers I've bought and how I've used that and um, also if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to make the tabs then also let me know down in the comments I'd be happy to do that but otherwise I'm going to get some stickering done and get some more birthdays put in this planner. So I hope that you enjoyed that flip through and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and consider following me on Instagram. I'd love to um, have you over there. My pages are linked down below. I've also linked where you can buy this. I got this on Amazon for $14.99, so quite reasonable indeed. But thank you again for watching, for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.